Hey guys, hoping all is well with everyone. So in this video, we're going to continue our read aloud of Wayside School is Falling Down by Louis Sakar. And last time we finished, we completed chapter 12, so we'll be starting with chapter 13 today. I hope you guys enjoy the read today, and uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. Chapter 13, A Giggle Box, A Leaky Faucet, and A Foghorn. Every day after lunch, Mrs. Jules read a story to the class. Dana hated stories. The last book Mrs. Jules had read was a story about a pig and a spider. The pig was real cute, and the spider was very wise. Dana thought it was a horrible book. It made her laugh too much. Everyone else laughed too, but the problem was that Dana always kept laughing long after everyone else in the class had stopped. It was very embarrassing, and sometimes she broke out laughing at a part that wasn't even funny because she remembered something funny that had happened earlier. John called her a giggle box. That only made her laugh harder. Once she broke up laughing in the middle of an arithmetic test because she remembered something funny the pig had said. There goes the giggle box, said John. She hated John. But that wasn't the worst part of the book. In the end, the spider died. Dana couldn't stop crying, and she thought it was so silly too because in real life she didn't even like spiders. She squashed them all the time. John called her a leaky faucet. Somebody call a plumber to fix the leaky faucet, he said. She laughed through her tears. She hated John. Once in music, they learned a song about a dragon. When the song begins, the dragon is very brave, but then he loses his only friend, so he isn't brave anymore. She, he goes back to his cave, where he is sad and lonely for the rest of his life. The song always made Dana cry. Every recess, John and Joe would chase after her, singing it. She'd run across the playground with her hands over her ears and tears streaming down her face. The bell rang. Lunch was over. Dana nervously walked up the stairs to Mrs. Jewell's room. Mrs. Jewell's would start a new book today. She hoped it wouldn't be funny or sad. She hoped Mrs. Jewell's would read a boring story with no jokes. When she got to class, John and Joe were standing by her desk waiting for her. Happy birthday, Dana, said John. He was holding a present. It was wrapped in green paper and had a pink bow. But it's not my birthday, said Dana. Well, that's okay, said John. You can have it anyway, since I'm always teasing you, he and Joe snickered. Dana eagerly tore off the wrapping paper. Maybe John wasn't so bad after all, she thought. It was a box of tissues. John and Joe laughed hysterically. That's not funny, said Dana. She raised her fist and started to chase them. Mrs. Jules rang her cowbell, and all the children settled quietly in their seats. We are ready to begin a new story, said Mrs. Jules. She held up the book. It's called Stinky. Dana laughed at the title and quickly covered her mouth. It's about a cute and playful skunk, said Mrs. Jules. Oh no, gasped Dana. She knew animal stories always made her cry. The animal's mother would get shot by human hunters, or else humans would build a shopping center and destroy the animal's home. She hated humans, but she knew that that was silly because she was a human, and so were all her friends. The only human she really hated was John, and she didn't think he was even human. Mrs. Jules read, It was such a beautiful day. Stinky and his mother went for a walk across the forest. Hi, Stinky, said Charlie the Chipmunk. Hi, Charlie, said Stinky. Come along, Stinky, called his mother. Stinky hurried after her. They came to a road. Suddenly, Stinky heard a noise he had never heard before. It was very loud, like thunder. A car, driven by humans, was speeding toward him. Look out, shouted his mother. Stinky stopped in the middle of the road and stared at the onrushing car. He had never seen a car before. His mother pushed him out of the way just in time. He was safe, but unfortunately the car ran over his mother. Mama, Mama, he sobbed over and over again, but his mother didn't answer. She was dead. Dana cried. Uh-oh, there goes the leaky faucet, said John. He and Joe laughed. 
Dana sniffled and wiped her eyes, but the tears wouldn't stop. She just kept thinking about poor Stinky. What would he do without his mother? She wondered. Maybe he can go live with Charlie the Chipmunk, she hoped. She pulled a tissue out of the box John had given her and loudly blew her nose. There goes the foghorn, said John. Dana laughed into her tissue. She blew her nose again even louder. It must be a very foggy day, said John. The next day after lunch, Dana hurried up 30 flights of stairs before the bell rang so she could talk to Mrs. Jules before the class started. Yes, Dana, said Mrs. Jules. Can I leave the room when you read today? asked Dana. Why? asked Mrs. Jules. Because I hate stories, said Dana. They make me laugh and cry too much. You don't hate stories, Dana, Mrs. Jules told her. You love stories. I wish everyone laughed and cried as much as you. Really? asked Dana. She couldn't believe it. All this time she thought she hated stories when really she loved them. She was glad she really loved stories. Suddenly she made a face. Oh, yuck, she said. What is it? asked Mrs. Jules. What if I really love John, too? Chapter 14. Calvin's Big Decision It was Calvin's birthday. His mother made him chocolate cupcakes with jelly beans on top. Mrs. Jules passed them out to the class. Hey, Dana, said Leslie. I'll trade you my black jelly bean for your red one. Okay, said Dana. Everyone traded jelly beans. That was the most fun part of the party. Bibi was very excited. Tell everybody what you're getting for your birthday, Calvin, she said. I don't know, Calvin mumbled as he stared at his yellow jelly bean. He's getting the best present, said Bibi. What are you getting, Calvin? asked Mrs. Jules. Calvin frowned. I don't know, he griped. I mean, I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. Huh? asked Jason. See, I usually get toys, Calvin tried to explain, but they always break or get lost or something happens to them. But this year I'm getting something I'll never lose. I'll have it for the rest of my life. What is it? asked Terrence. A tattoo, said Calvin. Ooh, how neat, exclaimed Mauricia. Everyone thought it was a great present. You're so lucky, Calvin, said Rondi. I wish I could get a tattoo, too. Instead, I got a tutu. I got a tutu, too, said Dana. My parents won't let me get a tattoo, complained John. My parents wouldn't let me get one either, said Calvin. Then, for my birthday, they said I could get one. But now I can't decide what to get. My dad's taking me to the tattoo parlor after school today. I just can't make up my mind. Get a snake said Stefan. No, get an eagle, said Dee Dee. They're the best. A dead rat, suggested Kathy. <clears throat> I just don't know, said Calvin. I've never had to make such a tough decision. Nothing else I do matters very much. It's not like choosing jelly beans. If you pick the wrong color jelly bean, big deal. You can always spit it out. But once you get a tattoo, you can't change your mind. You can't erase tattoos. Whatever I get, I'll have for the rest of my life. Get a naked lady, said Jason. Calvin shook his head. I just don't know. I just don't know. Where are you going to put your tattoo, asked Allison. Calvin threw up his hands. I don't know. You should put it on your arm, said Myron. That's the best place for tattoos. You're crazy, Myron, said Todd. Put it on your chest, Calvin. I know where you should put it, said Dana, but I can't say. She giggled like a maniac, then whispered it in Jenny's ear. Jenny giggled too. All day, everyone had lots of suggestions for Calvin. They told him what kind of tattoo he should get and where he should put it. A rainbow on his forehead, a flower on his cheek, an anchor on his arm. It was easy for the others to make suggestions. They wouldn't have to live with it for the rest of their lives. I just don't know, Calvin repeated over and over again. Bibi drew lots of pictures for him, in case he wanted to choose one of those. She drew lions, tigers, buffaloes, and butterflies. 
If you like one, I can draw it on your skin for you, said BB. Then the tattoo man can trace over it. I just don't know, muttered Kelvin. I just don't know. After school, Kelvin's father picked him up and drove him to the tattoo parlor. The next day when he walked into class, everybody stared at him. They couldn't see a tattoo. Did you get one? asked Mauricia. Kelvin smiled. Yep, he said. Where is it? asked Jason. Dana gasped. I know where, she exclaimed. She and Jenny giggled. Well, what'd you get? asked Todd. It was a real tough decision, said Kelvin. I almost got a leopard fighting a snake, but then my dad told me to think about it. He said it was sort of like getting a second nose. You may think you want another nose, because that way if one nose gets stuffed up, you can breathe through the other nose. But then he asked me, Calvin, do you really want two noses? Your father is very wise, said Mrs. Jules. Calvin nodded. That made me think, he said. I decided I didn't want a snake and a leopard fighting on my body for the rest of my life. I suddenly knew exactly what I wanted. He pulled up his left pant leg. There was a small tattoo just above his ankle. Everyone crowded around to look at it. A potato, exclaimed Leslie. How stupid. That's the worst tattoo in the world, said Mac. They all thought it was a dumb tattoo. Anything is better than a potato, said Jason. It's a pretty potato, said BB. Try to be trying to be nice. I wish I could draw potatoes that good, but even BB thought it was a dumb tattoo. Ah, I like potatoes, said Calvin. I would hope so, said Mrs. Jules. Calvin could tell Mrs. Jules didn't like his tattoo either. I would have gotten an eagle, said Dee Dee, soaring across the sky. Not me, said Terence. I would have gotten a lion. I would have gotten a kangaroo, said Leslie. All day, everyone told Calvin what they would have gotten. A fire-breathing dragon, a lightning bolt, a creature from outer space. None of them said they would have gotten a potato. But Calvin knew better. He knew it was easy for his friends to say what they would have gotten, because they really hadn't had to choose. He was the only one who really knew what it was like to pick a tattoo. Even Mrs. Jules didn't know that. He looked at his potato. He smiled. It made him happy. He was sure he had made the right choice. At least he was pretty sure. Chapter 15. She's back. Dee Dee ran across the playground screaming. At first, Lewis thought she was having fun, but then he realized something was wrong. He hurried after her and grabbed her arm. Dee Dee, are you alright? He asked. She stared at him wide-eyed as he continued to scream. Several other kids gathered around. What's wrong with Dee Dee? asked Myron. I don't know, said Lewis. Dee Dee hiccuped three times and gasped. I saw her! Who? Said, asked Lewis. Dee Dee didn't answer. She just stared right through him. But everyone else knew whom Dee Dee had seen. Most of them had seen her, too, during the last two weeks. Where is she? Where was she? asked Todd. On the monkey bars, said Dee Dee, still trembling and breathing hard. I was hanging upside down, and suddenly she was hanging upside down right next to me. Did she wiggle her ears? asked Jenny. Only one, said Dee Dee. I jumped off and ran away before she could wiggle the other one. That's good, said Rondi. Who is she? asked Lewis. A hippopotamus? No, said Myron with a laugh. Why do you say that? Because when a hippopotamus gets mad, it wiggles its ears. She's worse than a hippopotamus, said Allison. I saw her last week at the water fountain, said Todd. I bent down to get a drink, and then there she was, drinking at the faucet next to me. I saw her on the stairs, said Rondi. I was going up the stairs, and she went right past me, sliding down on the banister. <clears throat> Who? asked Mrs. Uh, asked Lewis. Mrs. Gorth, said Dee Dee. Just saying the name sent a shiver of fear through her body. Oh, your old teacher, said Lewis with a shrug. Is she back? I always wondered what happened to her. 
The children looked at each other. Mrs. Gorf was the teacher they had before Mrs. Jules took over. They had never told anyone how they had gotten rid of her. They especially couldn't tell Lewis. She was the meanest teacher in the history of Wayside School. Of course, there are other teachers at other schools who are meaner. Lewis looked toward the monkey bars. I don't see her, he said. Well, she was there, Dee Dee insisted. I saw her. You just imagined you saw her, Dee Dee, said Lewis. If you hate somebody, or if you love somebody, you often think you see that person when she isn't there. It's very common. It's just like Mrs. Drizzle. Who is Mrs. Drizzle? asked Todd. She was the worst teacher I ever had, said Lewis. She shivered, he shivered just thinking about her. She was my teacher when I was your age. I sometimes think I, saw, I see her too, and I still have nightmares about her. Was she mean? asked Rondi. She was horrible, said Lewis. Every morning she used to check our fingernails. If they were dirty, she'd tell the whole class, Lewis has dirty fingernails this morning, she'd say in a really nasty voice. And if you talked in class, she would pick up the waste paper basket and put it over your head. You had to leave it on your head until the bell rang. Did she ever put it over your head? asked Todd. Lots of times. Everyone laughed. It wasn't funny, said Lewis. My mother always knew when I got into trouble, because I've had bits of trash stuck in my hair. Did it ever get stuck in your mustache, too? asked Rondi. Lewis didn't have a mustache when he was our age, said Allison. Did you, Lewis? she asked. Suddenly, Lewis screamed. Everyone stared at him. She's back, he shouted as he shook it with fear. Then he slapped himself in the face. Excuse me, he said. Sorry, for a second thought, I thought I saw Miss Driz Drizzle. He turned to Dee Dee. Come on, let's go to the monkey bars. No, declared Dee Dee. I'm not going back. I'm not getting on the monkey bars again. Lewis took hold of her hand. Mrs. Gorf isn't there, he said. You just imagined her. They headed to the monkey bars. No one else dared to follow. If she starts to wiggle her ears, run away as fast as you can, warned Dee Dee. She, she held tightly onto Lewis's hand. When they reached the monkey bars, no one was there. Where were you when you saw her? Lewis asked. I was hanging upside down, over there, said Dee Dee, pointing. Okay, go hang upside down, said Lewis. No, exclaimed Dee Dee. Don't worry, I'll be right here in case anything happens. It had rained during the night, so the sand of the monkey bars was wet and somewhat hard. Dee Dee walked across the sand and pulled herself up on the bar. She hooked her legs over, then hung from her knees. Well, do you see her? Lewis asked. No, it's safe now, said Dee Dee. Thanks, Lewis. I guess you're right. I must have seen my shadow or something. Dee Dee pulled herself right up and then hopped down from the monkey bars. She and Lewis walked away hand in hand. She held Lewis's hand not because she was scared, but because she liked him. Mrs. Drizzle sounds almost as bad as Mrs. Gorf, said Dee Dee. She was, said Lewis. She once made me put gum on my nose because I was chewing it in class. How can you chew your nose? asked Dee Dee. Behind them, Dee Dee's footprints could be seen in the wet sand under the monkey bars. There was also another set of footprints, made by a person who had much bigger feet. Chapter 16. Love and a Dead Rat Damien was in love with one of the girls in his class. Can you guess which one? He thought about her all the time. Myron threw a red ball to Damien. It bounced off his face. Huh? said Damien. Why didn't you catch the ball? asked Myron. What ball? asked Damien. The one that hit you in the face, said Myron. Did a ball hit me in the face? asked Damien. Yes, said Myron. Oh, good, said Damien. I was wondering why my nose hurt. He had been thinking about the girl he loved. 
he was in love with Mrs. Jules. That was why he was always doing things for her, like passing out papers. He thought he was very, she was pretty and nice. He thought she was smart, too. In fact, he thought she was one of the smartest people in the class. After recess, he hurried back up the stairs. Hello, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. Hello, Mrs. Jules, he said. You're always the first one here, aren't you? asked Mrs. Jules. Damien blushed and shrugged his shoulders. Do you uh, need any papers passed out or anything? he asked. It's so nice of you to ask, said Mrs. Jules. I think you are nice, too, said Damien. Mrs. Jules gave him a stack of workbooks to hand out. Then she gave him a Tootsie Roll Pop from the coffee can on her desk for being so helpful. But don't eat it until after lunch, she said. I won't, he assured her. He ate lunch with Myron and DJ. He saved his Tootsie Roll Pop for last. Joy and Marisha came up behind him. Hi, Damien, said Joy. How's your girlfriend? What? asked Damien. He turned red. Who are you talking about? I don't have a girlfriend. You're in love with Mrs. Jules, accused Marisha. You better watch out, said Joy. Mrs. Ju Mr. Jules might come after you. The two girls laughed. I don't know what you're talking about, said Damien. I'm not in love with Mrs. Jules. He looked to his friends for support. Myron shrugged. DJ smiled. Prove it, said Joy. Prove you're not in love with her. That's stupid, said Damien. How can I prove I'm not in love with Mrs. Jules? Give her this, said Joy. He hand she handed Damien a paper bag. Your lunch? asked Damien. Look inside, said Mauricia. Inside the paper bag was a dead rat. Damien knew Mrs. Jules hated dead rats more than anything in the world. Put it in her desk, said Joy. If you don't, it means you love her, said Mauricia. I'm not in love with her, said Damien. Prove it, said Joy. Okay, I will, said Damien. The girls left. You don't have to put the dead rat in her desk, said DJ. We don't care said Myron. You think I'm in love with her too, don't you? asked Damien. Myron shrugged. DJ smiled. Some friends you are, said Damien. I'll show you. After lunch, he was the first one back in class. He carried Joy's paper sack. Hello, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. Did you have a nice lunch? It was all right, he muttered. Oh, would you mind getting the construction paper from the closet and putting it on my desk? asked Mrs. Jules. Thank you. Damien went to the closet and got the construction paper. He put it on her desk. Then, when she wasn't looking, he opened her desk drawer and dumped the dead rat into it. He shut the drawer. Thank you, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. You're always so helpful. It's such a pleasure to have you in my class. Damien felt awful. Mrs. Jules read a story to the class. Damien couldn't pay attention. He kept wondering when she'd open her drawer. After the story, they had art. Everyone was supposed to make snowflakes. Damien folded his piece of construction paper in half. Mrs. Jules screamed. What's wrong, Mrs. Jules? asked Joy. Somebody put a dead rat in my desk, said Mrs. Jules. I did, declared Damien. Damien, Mrs. Jewel said with great surprise. Why? Because I hate you, said Damien. You're always making me do things for you. Oh, I see, said Mrs. Jules. Should I write my name on the board under discipline, he asked. No, that won't be necessary, said Mrs. Jules. That had made him even feel even worse. Why did I have to prove myself to Joy? He wondered. I don't like Joy. I like Mrs. Jules. He felt rotten. When the bell rang, Damien waited for all the other kids to leave. Then he walked to Mrs. Jules' desks. She was grading papers. Yes, Damien? Do you want me to erase the board for you? He asked. 
That's all right, said Mrs. Jules. I'll do it myself. Damon sadly walked out of the room and down the stairs. When he reached the bottom, he turned and ran all the way back up to Mrs. Jules' room. She was putting on her coat. I love you, Mrs. Jules, Damien declared. I'm sorry I put the dead rat in your desk. I did it because I didn't want everyone to know I loved you. I'm sorry. I love you too, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. You do? But what about Mr. Jules? Just because I love Mr. Jules, it doesn't mean I can't also love you. Love is different from most things. She picked up a piece of chalk. If I gave him a piece of chalk to someone, then I wouldn't have it anymore. But when I give my love to someone, I end up with more love than I started with. The more love you give away, the more you have left. Damien smiled. I love you, Mrs. Jules, he said. He felt his heart fill up with more love. I love you, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. This is getting disgusting, said the dead rat. It climbed out of Mrs. Jules' desk and walked out of the room. And I'll stop the video there, ending chapter 16. But I hope you guys enjoyed the read aloud today, and I hope to see you guys next time in our continuation of Wayside School is Falling Down. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please take good care and be safe.